Today, we will once again take a look at interesting footage that captures a moment. How Ukrainian FPV drones have blown up Russian troops' combat robots in Avdivka. Explosive Ukrainian drones have taken out Russian combat robots and also troops close to the Moscow-controlled strategic eastern city of Avdivka, new footage appears to show, with smaller ground drones likely to have a more prominent role in future fighting. Russian forces have started using ground-based robots with automatic grenade launchers in combat in Ukraine, Kyiv's 47th Mechanized Brigade said in a post to social media on Saturday. Ukraine used first-person view drones to take out two of the combat robots close to Avdivka, a hotspot of fighting in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region, the brigade said. While Moscow captured Avdivka in mid-February, and clashes have since raged on west of the settlement. In a brief video published on messaging app Telegram by the brigade, what appears to be at least one Russian uncrewed ground vehicle, UGV, is targeted by drone specialists belonging to the brigade. So far, these are isolated cases of the Russians using such a technique, but Moscow and Kyiv have invested heavily in uncrewed vehicles, most prominently in the air, but also on the ground and on water the brigade added. Russia and Ukraine are both using ground drones in their war efforts, often designed to keep soldiers further away from hostilities as the uncrewed vehicles take on dangerous missions. Russia has developed several types of ground drones, including the AI-enabled Marker combat robot and the Zubilo UGV, designed to help with logistics R, while Ukraine, too is forging ahead with developing and deploying UGVs. More and more small, light combat and logistics ground drones are appearing across the front lines, many of which are made by troops or volunteer organizations and feature more rudimentary designs that can be quickly assembled," said Samuel Bendet of the Center for Naval Analyses. The video published by Ukraine's 47th Mechanized Brigade shows UGVs that have been incapacitated then repeatedly targeted by Ukrainian drones, meaning the ground drones were likely swiftly identified and destroyed," Bendet said. What we will witness is the use of many cheap, light UGVs like those in this video that can be quickly put together, potentially quickly lost if necessary, and quickly replaced," he told media. With the sheer number of reconnaissance and surveillance drones in the air able to sniff out larger, more sophisticated UGVs that Moscow has developed, like the Marker, it's unlikely that large UGVs can appear in this war, at least for the foreseeable future," Bendet evaluated. From the clip published by Ukraine's military, it is not clear what the circumstances around the targeting of the Russian UGVs were. It is hard to tell whether the UGVs were sent out instead of soldiers or alongside troops," Bendet said. As more UGVs will enter combat, both sides will try to develop tactics and concepts for integrating them in assault and battlefield operations and take away some of the danger for human fighters," he continued. Both Russia and Ukraine are pushing to develop UGVs that can increasingly operate on their own," he added. In mid-September 2023, Ukraine's drone czar and digital transformation minister, Mikhailo Fedorov, said Ukraine was testing its ironclad, unmanned robot in combat missions on the front lines. Ironclad it is equipped with a machine gun or robotic combat turret and is designed to help assault enemy positions, conduct reconnaissance missions and provide fire support. It can reportedly travel at a speed of up to 12 miles per hour," Fedorov said. At the start of 2024, Ukraine's ground forces said its 5th Separate Assault Brigade was using a ground-based combat drone to target Russian positions. Currently, Russian losses in Ukraine are fast approaching new milestones, by Kyiv's count, as questions loom over Western aid ahead of an anticipated Russian offensive in the late spring. Russian casualties in the war-torn country will soon hit 450,000, according to updated figures published by Kyiv's military on Sunday, 
Moscow lost 650 troops in the past day, Ukraine's general staff said, bringing the current purported total to 442,170. According to Kyiv's military, Moscow's forces lost 15 tanks in the previous 24 hours, and Ukraine also said on Sunday, Russia has now lost nearly 7,000 tanks and close to 15,000 vehicles and fueling tankers, used to keep armored vehicles running. Neither Russia nor Ukraine typically offers up details of their own casualty counts, nor how much military equipment they have lost in the more than 25 months of all-out war. Experts suggest that Moscow and Kyiv inflate their tallies of their opponents' losses and downplay or skirt around the toll that years of war have taken on their own militaries. Russia's defense ministry said on Sunday that Ukraine had lost 15,650 tanks and other armored combat vehicles since February 2022, but did not offer specific figures on Kyiv's total casualties, nor how many fuel tankers it had lost. Casualty counts are one indicator of the human cost of the war, despite the uncertainty on how accurate the figures are. If Ukraine's tally includes overall casualties, as well as Russian fighters who are missing or died in non-combat circumstances, it is a perfectly plausible tally, Nick Reynolds, a research fellow for land warfare at the London-based Royal United Services Institute think tank. Russia has likely sustained more than 335,000 casualties since February 2022, the British government assessed in early March, this almost certainly reflects Russia's commitment to mass and attritional warfare, the UK Defence Ministry said. Meanwhile, approximately 31,000 soldiers have died fighting for Ukraine against Russia, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in late February, and Shaigu also said in late 2023 that Kyiv had sustained 383,000 casualties since February 2022, according to domestic state media reporting. Despite caution around specifics, are extensive on both sides, but Kyiv has warned that Moscow is likely to start a new offensive in late May or during the summer, and that it is amassing new troops for the effort. 